My name is Anthony Moore. I'm the CEO of American Eagle Gold. With me right now is lead geologist at NAC, Neil Prouse. Neil, tell us about 24, 26, and 28. Why are they so significant? Yeah, all three of them, uh, very good holes for, for starting to put together this south zone uh, mineralized package of rock. Uh, we already knew there were some really good grades at surface. Uh, 24 was really important because it ties the high grades at surface, uh, peters out a little bit, but still remains pretty consistently mineralized right down to a depth of 950 meters uh, underneath the historical north zone. So it shows that continuity that we we now know is there um, along a, a slightly narrower zone than the south and north zones eventually swell to be at their, their surface expression, but it's going a long way to showing that continuity of mineralization. So very, very encouraging to see. Uh, hole 26 does something similar, collars from the same location, but then drills off to the northwest. And it shows, again, just consistency of grade right down to depth with some really good higher grade uh, intervals within that. And yeah, really nice bornite veining uh, and pretty consistent gold grades throughout it too. Um, what I'm most excited about is hole 28. Hole 28 showed from surface uh, really, really strong gold grades. And the best of the gold grades were hosted in a pretty unique looking rock, especially from a mineralization standpoint, where it was really cryptic. It was very hard to see with the naked eye until you got it outside in the sunlight. And it's just this really finely crystallized bornite in this more angular sedimentary breccia. Uh, so it looks distinct from the stockwork mineralization, which we see in the uh, the altered intrusive, which characterizes a lot of the south zone, but it's got that same copper to gold ratio signature, just in a, in a different mineralization style. Uh, and we, you know, just scratched the surface of this zone. So it is, there's definitely room for expansion as we step a bit further to the east and to the south of this area near surface where there's no historical drilling. Um, and uh, yeah, that that steps us out a bit closer to our our uh, our embayment zone, and uh, mineralization picked up at depth a little bit too in twenty eight as well. So there's some some really good indications we're still within the system even at depth. So all in all, really really encouraging holes there for uh, for that south zone drilling. You're seeing some smoke towards the IP embayment zone. Yes, yeah, it's uh, yeah, hopefully more more goodness to come out of there uh from this season and uh, and next for sure um yeah and and also i mean i don't want to detract from uh the the drilling along the western zone too holes uh holes 22 and 25 i mean you know, not as booming high grade as as 28 but there's still some really good intervals within that and at depth it does show that continuity from the north zone to the south zone especially within the the body of rock that's immediately proximal to the porphyry stock, where we start to see little dikes of the porphyry stock, there's some really interesting mineralization style in there and some really high grades within that. So it's just good indications that NAC has the potential to host some of these really high grade, uh, high grade volumes of, of rock, uh, either immediately abutting the porphyry stock or where these, these dikes that seem to be associated with the mineralization out, out more to the west. Uh, have a have a confluence so yes yeah, again really encouraging to see see those holes as well so we let the cat out a little bit out of the bag by giving a little bit of insight in terms of what we're kind of seeing in 33 35 38 37 uh just just high level just you know explain to the investors you know what we're seeing there why we're you know cautious optimistic for the assays uh etc yeah really good visual mineralization and again a style of mineralization that we hadn't seen before at NAC. Uh, NAC just keeps surprising. It's dominantly hosted. I mean, there's two two unique styles of mineralization. 33, we hit a big interval of chalcedonic hydrothermal breccia uh, and broader zones of chalcedonic stock work with some really nice copper sulfide mineralization within it. Uh, so that's very encouraging to see. Uh, a bit more indicative of epithermal style mineralization, but pretty deep within the porphyry system. Uh, so that, you know, that has some some pretty, pretty good implications for for telescoping, or at least a migrating center of the system. So it shows that it was long lived. Um, 
And we already have some indications of that just from the, the scale of the mineralization we see, but it's good to get some more textural confirmation of that. Uh, and then stepping to the north in 30, uh, 37 and 38, uh, we're hitting a pale, different textured intrusive with pretty abundant chalcopyrite and boronite mineralization as disseminations in it. And it's the first large volume of intrusive rock we've seen with a lot of copper bearing sulfide disseminations. Uh, and these are really interesting looking. There's there's definitely a sericitic overprint to the rock. There's there's dark sooty rims around the sulfides. I mean, this looks like there's been a bit of a history to this rock. Um, so yeah, it's going to take some time to to work through. But we're in the meantime, we're eagerly anticipating the assays for that. So there's yeah, uh, hopefully some some more good news to come. We did some university testing at the lab of uh, some of the core from thirty five. Can you just speak to that a little bit? Yeah, they're still still undergoing that. There's some SEM work done on the the actual composition of the sulfides, and it does look like there's some chalcosite rims around uh, around some of the boronite grains, which is really encouraging from a grade potential. Um, and then, yeah, we're just waiting for confirmation on the actual modal abundance of of copper uh, and copper bearing sulfides in the rock. But it's uh, it's looking pretty encouraging so far. Really, really, really neat stuff. All right, Neil. Well, look, we're very excited. It sounds like we have a, uh, you know, four looking statements and a tiger by the tail here. We're excited for these results to come out. And I like to tell people, uh, we had a little bit of break in terms of our news, but we're gonna have a lot more regular news coming out through the end of the year. We need to feed that beast, and uh, we believe NAC is quite the monster. So thanks a lot, Neil, and uh, stay tuned, everyone. Yeah, thanks, Tony.